Hey guys, welcome back to another Python image library tutorial. Um, in this video, I'm going to try and synthesize a lot of the stuff we've learned in, well, I guess not a lot of the stuff that we've learned in other videos, but one of the crucial things that we learned, and of course, introduce some new stuff to you. Hopefully this video is going to be a little bit longer than the others, because I do want to show you more stuff. So, initially, what I want to start off things uh, off the bat with is this split function. Now, this split function, of course, lives in our image object, and what this does is it returns a tuple of other images. And it's, it's a little interesting in that way, because what it does is it returns a tuple of individual bands from the image. And when I say band, I'm referring to, like, R, G, and B. Each of these things, red, green, and blue, are bands. They are different uh, color attributes and color properties in the image. And what this does is it will kind of give us them uh, along with alpha, of course. So it's, it's important to know what the mode of the image is, because that'll determine um, if you'll be returned R, G, and B, or alpha along with it or even other things like um, simple black and white or just a simple a single band it it is entirely up to the mode of the image so if I were to try and run this if I were to try and show you what this returns it's interesting because it'll tell us that oh okay the self dot im dot bands is it's a none type it doesn't have any attribute bands and this isn't in our code this is in the actual Python image library source code. So, this is where the image library is a little funky, because it gets kind of lazy. Um, in, a, in a previous tutorial, I, sh I told you that the load function, you know, the uh, image.load, would return a pixel access object, at least in versions 1.1.6 and later. And this pixel access object, uh, pixel access object allowed us to like get and set pixels in the object uh, and in the image with these coordinates and indexing in a list and that sort of thing. But also what this function does is it allocates storage for the image and loads it from the file. Um, now normally you don't need to call this method because the open function will do it to begin with, but sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> like I said, the image module gets a little lazy. So if we want to run the split function, we need to call image.load before we call image.split. So now if I run this, you'll see it works. And of course, we're getting returned a tuple of three different kinds of images. Actually four, because we have our alpha values. So here, if I were to set image to equal, um, let's say, the first index of this, if I run this, you'll see that, whoa, my modified Python file has the bands that we had for all of the red colors. If I go back to this, uh, we can do the same thing with green. Run this. Now there's a little bit more to it. Do the same thing with blue. Oh, it would help if I actually ran the code. And you can see it changed there. And alpha, of course, is going to be a little bit different. Check it out. Not run the code, John. Come on. See, now you get a whole different thing entirely, because of our alpha values. So, what I want to do at this point is actually merge these things together. So, this is where it's interesting, because I'm going to save all of these bands. Red, green, blue, and alpha. And I'm going to put some of them together. R, G, and B are the ones that I want. Let's say I don't want this alpha value anymore. I just want uh, a typical image that doesn't have transparency. So what I can do is I can say image equals image dot merge. Now this is going to create it simply with R, G, and B values, but no alpha value anymore. So if I run this code, let's see, attribute merge. Okay, uh, I'm, I, I'm wrong here. I should be using the capital I image because this is within the module. So, there we go. Capital image, capital I image because this is the module, not the actual image object we've got opened up for us. Now if I run this, merge takes exactly two arguments, three given. 
Oh, okay, oh, okay, of course. It takes um, the mode that we actually want to set here, RGB, which is going to be a string for the mode, RGB, and a the tuple, a tuple of the bands that we want to put to it. And we just got these bands from the initial image object that we just split up. And now we put it back together with the merge function. So now if I run this, there we go. No more errors. No more errors. And we've got this image that we... The same thing we had before, but there is no alpha channel to it. There is no transparency in it. If I run this, actually, uh, I'll, I'll try and show you here. If I print image.getData. Okay. I think I can loop through it for color in image dot get data. Can I print that color? There we go. You see all the bands that are shown here. Okay, I might want to kill this before it kills my text editor. Thank, thank you. <laughs> all the bands here. We've got all this white, but we don't have any alpha. There is no transparency. And when we get to the actual image, of course, like the Python shape in the Python logo. There is still no alpha band. There is no transparency. RGB, but not RGBA. Now, what I passed into this merge function is a string that determines mode. And we've seen this before, or at least I guess I haven't shown you guys, but all of these things, that all the images that are created have a certain mode. If I were to print, I'll actually do it after our image load function call. If I were to print image.mode, it would tell us that, yeah, this is an RGBA, and that's a string. Now, of course, you know, whenever we create an image, like image2 equals image.new, we need to pass in a mode, which is either RGB, RGBA, or anything else that we set for it. So, there, the image has a property. It has uh, image.mode, and this is going to determine what the image is right now. So, if I print this out, that's the mode there. Now that we've recreated the image by merging the three bands, RGB, and it's got this mode. If I print it out here, image.mode, now you can see it's RGB with, our, with no alpha channel, with no alpha band, with no transparency. So, okay, three things we kind of covered in this video. We got image mode, we got image split that sets it up in, and, and kind of separates all the bands, and then we've got image merge, with the capital I, because it's within the module, it creates a new image with the bands that you supply and the mode that you supply. And none of this will work, or at least not split, split won't work, without image.load. So, a little bit more to it here, um, at least more than I want to show off, but that's the way that we can strip an alpha channel, strip other channels from it, by just kind of taking what we want from split. And of course, you can kind of play with this, right? You can say, oh, I don't know, B, or, yeah, G, B, R. Set things in a different order. What do we get? Whoa, ho, now we got a funky looking Python logo. You have a whole lot of options here for what you want to at least toy with if you do want to toy with things. R, B, G. <laughs> so I don't know, mess around, have fun, but the point of this video and what I wanted to show you was Mode, split, merge, and of course load to be able to run split. So, okay. Thanks for watching, guys. I know this was a little bit of a longer one, but I think that's a good thing. <laughs> I, I hope you're enjoying the series, and I hope you're enjoying the cool stuff you can do with this library. So, thanks, everybody. I'll talk to you later.